Welcome back to another Space News Summary video with me. <laughs> this week we've got lots of Starship updates to discuss once again, including lots of new information for the upcoming orbital launch. We had two Falcon 9 missions, three Chinese launches, a launch from Israel, a Soyuz launch, India conducted a very interesting autonomous flight test, and a whole bunch more. Let's kick things off. <laughs> Things have been a bit windy down at Starbase throughout the week. Lab Padre streams captured a few instances of hats blowing off and this dumpster blew into the road and spilled things everywhere. I feel sorry for whoever had to clean that up, but wait, that's not what we're here to talk about today. How's Starship coming along? Work continues on the orbital launch mount and the surrounding infrastructure. Lab Padre captured the installation of more water deluge system piping being lifted into place on Sunday, and the launch mount itself underwent some testing. Here you can see venting from the ring, which is a test of the 20 Outer Raptor 2 engine quick disconnect system. This is the gas that's used to spin up those outer engines so that they can start up. The inner engines of the rocket are fed by gases that are stored on the onboard tanks hidden underneath the booster's chines. The outer engines don't need to be relit in flight, hence why they don't need to have their own spin-up gases stored on board, but the central engines of course do, since they'll be needed for the booster, boost back burn and ultimate landing. The booster quick disconnect system was also tested last week. Here you can see a full speed retraction test. This arm supplies the booster with propellant and power and needs to rapidly detach upon liftoff. Things look like they're generally wrapping up around the launch mount. Scaffolding is coming down, and you can see the work platform being lowered away in this shot. And look, it's Booster 7! That's right, Booster 7 is back. It was removed from the pad a few weeks ago, where it sat having final modifications and installations, and of course to allow workers to work on the pad without the giant rocket in the way. On Wednesday last week, Booster 7 was lifted up with the chopsticks and lifted onto the pad. A short while later, the quick disconnect arm on the launch mount was extended and connected to the booster. There are basically no more milestones or hurdles that Booster 7 needs to undergo, so a lot of us are all hopeful that this is the final time that Booster 7 is lifted onto the launch mount. The next time this thing leaves the pad, it'll hopefully be under its own power, with Ship 24 stacked above it. Here's a brand new animation from the artists of Spaceflight of what this might look like. Yes, this thing has been in the oven for a super long time now, and is a huge collaborative project featuring dozens of artists that I'm sure you're all familiar with. This is undoubtedly one of the best Starship animations out there, and I highly urge you to check it out, there's a link in the description. It has some great moments in there, and the ending... The ending, that gave me chills. Massive props to everyone who worked on this, the wait was definitely worth it. Over at the build site, SpaceX started moving vacuum Raptor engines to the flapless Ship 26, and the vehicle now has all three of its vacuum Raptor engines installed. We also saw its sea level Raptors moved to it for installation as well. This is all definitely a positive sign that SpaceX still intends to fly Ship 26. Whenever a vehicle is moved to the rocket garden, there's always a bit of a worry that it's being moved there for retirement. And we know now, of course, that this isn't always necessarily the case, as Ship 24 was placed on a transporter and moved out of the rocket garden last week and taken down to the launch site. Now, in terms of when we can expect the Starship orbital flight test, Elon is still keeping to the current plan of looking like late April. In this tweet a few weeks ago, he hinted at wanting to launch on 420, and just last week, he tweeted that the orbital flight test was looking at only being a number of weeks away. Now, check this out. This is a map of the Starship orbital flight test, or more specifically, this is the marine notices for the orbital flight. These windows run from the 6th of April to the 12th of April, though of course this is all dependent on the FAA granting SpaceX a launch license for these dates. This image shows the trajectory of the vehicle over the Gulf of Mexico after liftoff, and this map here shows the path of Ship 24 re-entering, with that little blue square there being the expected splashdown point. Based on this earlier mentioned tweet, I think we're realistically looking at two weeks minimum for the launch day. Whether or not Elon does get his 420 launch date remains to be seen, though it looks like there might be a bit of a competition for the airspace for that date, as the National Reconnaissance Office has confirmed a launch date for the 20th of April for the Enrol 68 mission. This will be a special one, it's the second to last ever Delta IV heavy rocket launch. Make sure you hit subscribe down below, and of course ring the bell so that you can make sure that you're notified of my Space News Update video covering this launch. Delta IV Heavy is one of my favourite launch vehicles in operation right now. And hey, while you're down there, if you don't mind leaving a little like on the video, it really helps me stay above water, and I always do appreciate it. 
SpaceX had a busy week for Falcon launches last week, though then again, when do they not? <laughs> On the 29th of March, they launched Starlink Group 5-10 from Cape Canaveral, which deployed another 56 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Shortly after stage separation, the Falcon 9 first stage landed on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This particular first stage was B-1077, which has previously supported the Crew-5, GPS-3, SVO-6 and the Inmarsat 6F2 launch. The second Falcon 9 launch of the week we saw was yesterday, on Sunday. This was a re-attempt at launch following an automated abort earlier in the week due to a suspected engine problem. Luckily, engineers deemed the rockets to be in good shape, and all things went well on Sunday. We saw successful engine ignition and liftoff. This was the Space Development Agency's Tranche Zero mission, and the payload was 10 military communication satellites, which of course are classified, and therefore, unfortunately, SpaceX didn't show any footage of the second stage once the first stage separated. Luckily, we still got footage of the landing of the first stage, which in this case was at the landing zone on the mainland as the mass of the payload meant that the Falcon could detach with enough fuel to make it all the way back to land, rather than needing to touch down in the ocean. I gotta share some footage from India now, so apologies for the sadly necessary anti-content ID filter, but the India Space Research Organization just landed a space vehicle autonomously. They did it with their reusable launch vehicle, or RLV, at their aeronautical test range early on Sunday. The RLV was carried up by a Chinook helicopter and released mid-air before gliding down and landing autonomously on the runway. This is a big deal because it's the first time a winged vehicle has been carried to such an altitude and released for autonomous landing. The RLV has low lift to drag ratio, which means that it needs to approach at high glide angles and land at high speeds, hence why it's coming in pretty fast in the video. It achieved all of this thanks to a lot of cutting edge technology developed by the ISRO, including accurate navigation hardware and software, an indigenous landing gear, aerofoil honeycomb fins, and a brake parachute system. This successful test brings India one step closer to its ambition of having its own reusable launch vehicle. China conducted three launches last week, pretty much back to back to back. The first launch on the 30th, where we saw a Long March 2D carry two Earth observation satellites to low Earth orbit. The next day we saw a Long March 4C carry a single reconnaissance satellite to low Earth orbit. The third launch from China was a fun one. This was on Sunday and was the maiden launch of the Tianlong-2 launch vehicle, a three-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle developed by commercial spaceflight company Beijing Tianbing Technology Limited, also known as just Space Pioneer. They have stated that the rocket's payload was the Love Space Science remote sensing satellite, which successfully entered a 500 km solar synchronous orbit. Now, according to Space Pioneer, this was not only China's first commercial liquid-fueled rocket, but also the first liquid-fueled rocket to obtain orbit on the first attempt. Now, I have some doubts about the legitimacy of this second claim. I mean, the Saturn V springs to mind as a liquid-fueled rocket that reached orbit on the first, and in fact every, launch attempt. And of course, more recently we have the SLS, though granted that's not 100% liquid-fueled. Ooh, but then again, the Saturn V's launch escape system was solid fuel, right? <laughs> I think maybe the claim is that this is the first commercial liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit on the first attempt. I can't think of another one off the top of my head that managed this. Do you know of any other commercial rockets that didn't crash on their first go? I'm sure there must be, but I'm actually drawing a bit of a blank right now. Maybe Tianlong 2 is the first. If I'm wrong, then let me know in the comments down below. I'm genuinely interested to hear about this. I'm showing an older launch video for this next bit, as I wasn't able to find any footage of last week's Soyuz 2.1V launch. It's always weird seeing Soyuz without those four classic side boosters. This mission was fairly secretive. The broomstick carried a single VKS satellite to low Earth orbit, which Roscosmos state is for technology demonstration purposes. We had a very interesting launch from Israel. No good videos, unfortunately, just this angle from a distance where you can't really see anything. But the rocket creating that flame was an Israeli Shavit 2, carrying a single reconnaissance satellite for the Israel Ministry of Defense. Israel launches are interesting because their rockets launch westwards into a retrograde orbit, something seldom done elsewhere. The reason they launch rockets like this is because launching to the east means sending the rocket flying over the lands of countries that have a, at best, spotty relationship with Israel, and Israel doesn't really want to risk sending launch vehicles flying over those territories so that spent stages aren't dropped there or secret payloads don't fall down there in the event of a launch failure. So even though it takes more Delta V to launch retrograde, Israel feels that it's worth the fuel penalty as the rockets fly over the open Mediterranean Sea instead. 
Do you guys remember the leaky Soyuz MS-22? Well, it finally departed the International Space Station last week, no crew on board, undocking from the RASVET module's docking port before deorbiting and parachuting down to Kazakhstan on the 28th of March. Here's hoping this doesn't happen again. The bleak thing, I mean, not the safe touchdown of a crew-rated space vehicle. <laughs> I can't talk about this bit because it hasn't happened yet, but it is happening today, and that's the announcement of the crew members of Artemis 2. NASA's going to reveal to us who the astronauts are. These brave souls will fly aboard Orion on a journey out to the moon and back, the first time humans have visited the moon since Apollo 17. I can't wait to tell you all about this announcement in next week's video, and I also can't wait to tell you about my wonderful Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members, their names are currently on screen, and it's thanks to their generous support that I'm able to keep making these videos for you all every single Monday to keep you in the loop about space news. Uh, if you want to join their ranks and see your name in lights, then you can click the links below, but otherwise, uh, there are two videos on screen that you should think you'll like, hopefully they're good picks. And yes, I'm planning on making another KSB uh, Kerbal, Kerbal video on Wednesday. That should be good. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be ready yet, but I hopefully it will be. 